All right, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think any one of us was ever really prepared to be a parent. I think we, some of us, thought we had a good plan and a good strategy. And maybe some of us didn't even know we were going to have a kid and suddenly it just happened. No matter what, though, I think we all ended up discovering that we weren't really prepared for parenting as it came along. Parenting tends to put our lives on hold. But special needs parenting can put your life on an extended hold. If that's the case and you find yourself losing your individuality as you care for your special needs child, I want to remind you today that you are a person too. You are smart. You're important. You're an individual. And today, I want you to take a moment to remember that you are your own person. Hey, I'm Michelle Hayes, special education teacher and parent of a child with multiple special needs. I'm here to share stories, strategies, inspiration, and hope to parents and caregivers of individuals with disabilities. Because when life requires us not to be normal, it becomes our opportunity to turn into something extraordinary. Welcome to the journey. Wow, here we are today at the final episode of the first season of The Journey. The entire season has been dealing with all the driving conclusions that have led me to where I am today. And today's final episode, I really want to dive into talking about how you can rediscover your individuality. It can be easily lost as you find yourself pouring out all of that you are and and all that you have into caring for a special needs child and just trying to juggle this crazy busy thing called life. But I want to remind you that it is important that you rediscover who you are. Your life may go through seasons and you may have to find yourself in a moment where you have to put your own needs on hold and that is okay. But it is very, very important that you find a balance and that you are not constantly pouring out because it's a little cliche now, but you know the saying, you can't pour from an empty cup. And so I want to talk about rediscovering who you are and some very important factors in discovering who you are or remembering who you are are things that could take you back into years, years before that maybe you forgot about. Like, I want to ask you, what, what are your passions? Do you even remember what you are incredibly passionate about? Maybe that's evolved and changed as it did for me. Um, in a sense, um, some of the things that I was driven and passionate about, uh, evolved a little bit, but there's always that core, that essence that has always been there since I was a child. Do you know what your passions are? Have you forgotten? Do you need to be reminded or what sparks your curiosity? What are you eager to learn about? What do you want to know about? What are those things you want to discover? You know, you're not done discovering for yourself. And what about socializing? Who are the people that you love and that you love to be around? Have you lost contact with some of those people because of the busyness of your life or because the situation that you find yourself in that makes it harder to keep up and stay in touch with those people that you love? These are things that make up who you are as a person. And if you neglect them, if you forget to tend to them and take care of them, you can be lost in your child's identity and you can forget that you are actually someone apart from your child. So if you don't have answers to this, what are your passions? What are you curious about? Who are the people that you love to be around? If you don't have the answers to this, I think you may be too wrapped up in identifying yourself solely as the parent or a caregiver. And maybe you've forgotten who you are as an individual. Like I said before, there are seasons 
to slow down and stop. And there are seasons to move. When you're parenting a child with special needs, these seasons are not so obvious because it always feels like you're an essential person to your child's life and like you're never going to be able to tear yourself away and have your life back. And in a sense, you will always be needed. You will always be essential. But you have got to decide that you can make a way, that you can find and figure out a way to continue being yourself, to continue finding the things that you pursue, that you love, and care for your child with special needs. It's important that you take time away for yourself. I want to talk about three ways that you can take time away to take care of yourself. And these three categories are involve yourself in activities that are for rest, involve yourself in activities that re-energize you, and involve yourself in activities that are special hobbies and vocations. I want to dive into this, uh, this kind of self-care kind of talk and just kind of go through more meticulously in each category. So let's talk about activities that involve resting. I don't know about you, but oh my gosh, sleep. Do you get enough of it? I don't. Even on the weekends, I work, right? So I'm a full-time teacher and I get up. Why do they do this? I get up at the crack of dawn so that I can start my teaching day because I don't know. Somebody decided that the school day needs to start when the first rooster crows. And so I have to wake up very, very early. And I never feel like I get enough sleep. And I'm always looking for those weekends to catch up on sleep. And guess what happens Saturday morning when I'm so excited to sleep in? My kids are in my face early on Saturday. If you're laughing, it's probably because you identify. So sleep is something that uh, is very, very important. Did you know that when you sleep, your brain cleans itself out? And I know I'm oversimplifying this, but yeah, so we have these neurons in our brain and they, I don't know, I wish I could show you, but imagine that they have, they're, that they're like spiders with lots of legs, right? So you've got that, you know, uh, central part of the neuron and then it's got all these branches coming out and they all connect to other branches that connect to other neurons and it's a hot mess up there in our brain <laughs> and it's just such a miracle how it works. Anyway, some branches lead to nowhere. So you're sending out electrical impulses and, oh my gosh, am I boring you to pieces? I'm going to stop with the neurological talk. And if you care about it, maybe tune in next season where I might go into it. But let me just tell you, in your sleep, when you sleep, there comes this fluid that washes out your brain. And just trust me, okay? This is true. This uh, fluid washes out your brain and it cleans out these unnecessary branches that I'm talking about. And it prunes those branches and it keeps your brain tidy. (laughs) And um, it keeps your your brain working. And it's also important that when you sleep, uh, the connections that you did make, neurological connections that are important, they get reinforced. A lot of really great things happen. Obviously, your body recovers, your organs recover, and your brain recovers. So... Sleep is super important. If you're not getting enough, like me, you might have to figure out a way to get some sleep. I know for myself, when I come home from work, I am training my kids to leave me alone for 45 minutes. And I tell them, it's mommy's rest time. I give them their after school snacks. I turn on the television and I try my very hardest to take a 20 minute nap. Hey, It's the best I can do, but it's better than nothing, right? So my power nap carries me through to the end of the day. And when my kids start to pester me, I tell them, mommy's busy making more energy. (laughs) That's what I tell them. So sleep, please try to figure out a way to get some. There are other self-care activities that a lot of people enjoy, such as maybe going out and getting a manicure, a pedicure, a massage, Um, something relaxing that you enjoy. Maybe it's going out to eat rather than prepping a meal. Um, Anything that has to do with just pampering yourself 
what are you doing to do some of that self-care that um, that you need to replenish and restore yourself? Can you think of something that you really love, that you find very relaxing, that is not sleep? Maybe it's just a bath. Or maybe it's going to the gym and maybe sitting in a sauna or a hot tub. Is there a way that you can start participating in some of those relaxing activities and schedule yourself a time so that you can restore some of that energy that you really, really need by participating in these activities? What about entertainment? For me, it's something as simple as watching a series on Netflix. I love and hate watching series because then they end and then I have a hard time finding the next series. But uh, any kind of form of entertainment, like um, you could go out to the movies when this COVID situation ends. Ah, the good old days. (laughs) If you're listening to this in the future and you don't know what I'm talking about, this is the year 2020. And we have been kind of shut in because there's this illness called COVID-19 and none of us can go out very much. But there are some places where you can go out for entertainment, outdoorsy things. You could go out to a park. You could have a barbecue or a picnic. Um, There are some restaurants that are serving people that are sitting them far away from each other and distancing each other. What are you doing for entertainment? What are your suggestions for entertainment? I could maybe use some. (laughs) I feel like I've been cooped up way too long. So those are uh, some some self-care, some resting activities. What about re-energizing activities? So rest is really important and it's wonderful. Like sitting on the couch doing nothing is really wonderful, but I find myself more re-energized when I participate in some other types of activities. So what about learning something that you're very passionate about? Is that maybe, I don't know, maybe you're interested in learning legal matters, or if you're like me, (laughs) neurology is just the thing. Um, Learning, you could do so much learning just watching YouTube or anything really on Google. (laughs) Are you moving forward trying to learn something that you love? Does it re energize you? You know, um, Amazon is full of books and the library is full of books, and you can keep learning all the time. Another thing that is re energizing is continuing a relationship with people that you love, like family or friends. Sometimes I am so fed up with the noise. My house has a child with autism, so it is a noisy house. I'm sure that's the case for a lot of people who are caring for someone with special needs. The house can get really noisy with sounds that may drive you insane. Um, And so there's been times when I have just left my house to go for a walk and I tell myself, I need some peace and quiet. But five minutes into my walk, I'm thinking, hey, it sure would be nice to call my sister and find out what she's doing. Or it's been a while since I've talked to my dad. Or, hey, my friend from such and such place, she would get a kick out of this story. And before you know it, I'm walking and talking to people that I love. And it wasn't quiet that I was seeking. I was just wanting some me time, some uh, some time for myself, some time to feel like an adult, like a grown up. Um... Another thing that I think is re-energizing is taking on some projects. A lot of people love DIY stuff. They love to upcycle, they call it. So like you buy something at a garage sale or I don't know, at a thrift store and you upcycle that. Some people really enjoy doing that. Other people love making their house look better with, um, you know, decor or remodeling. For me, I really enjoy trying to do more uh, graphic design. I am terrible at it. Terrible. But I'm getting better and better. And I enjoy it so much that I can get lost for hours and hours on end just 
learning about design and creating my own little thing. Hey, the other day, just because I was learning to use a program called Adobe Illustrator and I'm learning how to use the tools, I spent, I'm not, I'm not kidding. I'm going to sound like such a loser, you guys, but I spent about two days on and off, you know, little breaks, um, trying to draw my own chicken. I don't know. I think chickens are funny. I like the animals and I think that my favorite animal is a guinea hen, you know, that little um, black chicken with white polka dots and a blue head. <laughs> and so that's what I, that's what I drew. And, and I found going back to having just a little break so I could draw some more of my <laughs> guinea hen chicken um, cartoon. I thought that was so much fun and I felt so re-energized and it just filled me with a lot of positive energy and so, um, whatever project that you might love and enjoy doing, seek that out. It, it really will fill you with new energy. I don't know how that works, by the way, but it, it really does fill you with new energy. Of course, everybody talks about exercise. We all know that if you are not having enough energy, exercise can make you feel more energetic. Um, I need to exercise. I am no example of exercise. Right now, I'm in a stage of life that I'm telling myself, look, I'm going to eat well, and I'm going to have an active lifestyle, and whatever my body does with that, then I'm going to be okay with it. But I'm getting rusty. I'm up in my 40s, and I know I need to do at least some yoga. I'm having a hard time because... um because I'm not making time for it, if I'm honest, if I'm honest. I've got other things that you can only prioritize so many things at a time, but uh, that's on my list. Hey, maybe by season two of the journey, I will come back to you and tell you that I got on some program. It's been harder for me because I used to go to a gym and I used to take my daughter with me, but then she aged out of their child care program and she does not behave appropriately in the gym. They're like, oh yeah, she can use the equipment. I'm like, ah, yeah, sure. Um, she'll go up to people's treadmills and just shut them off and um, randomly start screaming and turn things on and off, on and off, on and off. So anyway, um, <sighs> my wish list is to teach her how to use the equipment. Like in my perfect world, I would get on a bike and she would get on a bike next to me and I would train her. But there's only so much of Michelle to go around. And I feel like this pie has been sliced very thinly. And until I can rearrange some of where my time is going, um, exercise is just going to have to be, you know, parking far away and walking to the grocery store uh, entryway, uh, taking the stairs instead of the elevator, or going out for walks with the kids and playing outside, things like that. But yeah, yeah, fitness, important. Uh, don't use me as your example yet. <laughs> um, what about other things that will fill your life with purpose and destiny, like hobbies, vocational activities. Like a lot of people find meaning in participating in community projects. Like there's projects about feeding the hungry or working with the homeless or working with the battered women's shelters or investing your time in an orphanage. Uh, even what about foster parenting? Oh my gosh, you guys, there's such a need for that. It's harder for us with special needs uh, children to make that decision. But you know what? I already know a lot of parents that have taken that uh, responsibility on and we need foster parents. So that is a side note. Um, church, of course, participating in your church, um, just being an active member of your community um, can really give you a sense of belonging and a, a meaningfulness to your life. Uh, I've mentioned this previously, but studying and learning. Is there something that you really want to learn about that you want to become an expert in? I mentioned, for example, that I'm trying to learn graphic design. So I have joined uh, Facebook communities of graphic designers. I listen to podcasts from for, uh, graphic designers. I um, 
get on these like challenges and I watch people. I watch like people designing live and I bust out my computer and I try it out and I feel all little next to these really great graphic designers but I also feel so motivated because I know I'm not done learning so what are you learning about what are you pursuing and trying to grow in also there's work and career and I I really want to emphasize that you should find satisfaction in your job now everybody is going to have something negative to say about work because work is a responsibility and nobody really enjoys responsibilities because it's tasks that get assigned to you and you don't have a lot of choice over but I really want to ask you to reflect and see if you are in a in a job in a career that suits your passions and pursuits and curiosity is it something that tailors who you are and if that's not the case uh, we live in a digital world where you can get easily connected once you start looking. You find out what you need to be, you find out what you need to learn, and start learning those things on the side, and get yourself ready to have the job of your dreams, because you can find a lot of fulfillment in work. Uh, and if you are studying, I really want to urge you to push through. Do not quit. Do not drop out. I know it's harder now. I know it's much harder now, but even one step at a time gets you moving forward. Even half a step at a time gets you moving forward. You may not complete your career in the time span that other people are doing it, but you are carrying a lot with you. Just don't stop moving forward. Um, maybe you want to start a business. I really want to encourage you to pursue that. If that's something that you feel passionate about and you want to make your own product, your own brand, learn what you got to learn. Connect yourself with the people you got to connect, get connected with. Keep moving forward. And you know what? In all of these things, whether it be having a job, getting a career, starting a business, be prepared for failures and see them as positive things because failures are going to happen. And they're going to help you grow and learn. They're just going to build on to who you are and who you're going to become. So don't let setbacks hold you back. You keep moving forward. You don't expect everything to work out shiningly and beautifully from the get-go. It's not. If it does, then have a little bit of concern because you're not really prepared to face the storms when they come. you got to get your strength. And so don't be discouraged. Do not quit. I am telling you. Listen to me. Don't quit. Don't give up. You will find meaning in life when you do this. And you're going to say maybe, okay, uh, what about all this guilt? This really feels selfish. I know I feel selfish by doing the things that fulfill me and me alone. But I want to encourage you to let go of that guilt. And it's not like I'm telling you as someone who doesn't feel guilt. guilt. I do. I feel guilt all the time. But... Taking time to refuel is not selfish. As I said before, you can't pour from an empty cup. So you got to keep filling your cup so that you can give more of yourself. It's also important that you give your child the gift of independence. Your child can cannot always be relying on you and needing you for every little thing. Even if your child needs a lot of help and needs a lot of assistance, that child will benefit from allowing other people into his or her life. That child will benefit and the person helping your child will also benefit too. They will bless each other and they will help each other grow. And your child will learn more independence and to be torn away a little bit from you because... Well, none of us are going to live forever, right? And I don't know about you, but I've thought it. Who is going to be there when I'm not. We don't want to set up our child to only know and be comfortable around us and to only be able to get things accomplished because of us. So in tearing yourself away, you are giving your child the gift of independence and connections with other people. This also will teach other people about your burdens and how much you carry. And it'll 
make people see you for who you really are and how strong you are and how much you do. And it will really build more of an appreciation for what you do. I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel like people don't understand how much I'm pulling. And it it makes me feel like there's a lack of gratitude out there. Like, really, do you not understand how hard it is to just go to Walmart? <laughs> you know, do you not understand how hard it is to go 13 years without a full night's sleep. Um, let others help you. That way you can get that break and they can really understand you and maybe participate in a deeper bond with you. You don't want to wait for a breakdown to try to get some personal time. I've had breakdowns more times than I want to admit and I've had times where I've just had to grab my keys and leave my house in a fit of rage because I suddenly snapped. Those moments are hurtful to remember. They scar my family and they scar my children and they make me feel so gross. I don't think that you want to get there. I'm not one to say I haven't been there. Just, I want to avoid that. I want to not have to arrive to a breakdown by continually giving myself time to rest, by continually giving myself time to re-energize and continuously giving myself time to find hobbies and interests that are just for me. So it's important. Don't wait for that breakdown. Take a regular time for yourself. Finding your own identity is a crucial part to imparting an identity to your family and your children. The way you perceive yourself impacts those around you. And those people under your influence will be permanently touched by the way you identify yourself. So don't see yourself as a loser or a depressed person or someone who just can't get it together. See yourself as someone who you want to be. You are incredibly important. It is time for you to rediscover who you are. And if you're listening to me today, it is not too late. You can start right now, right here. Ask yourself, what are my passions? What am I curious about? Who are the special people in my life? Take the time to learn and pursue the individual that you are. In this journey, you will not only find joy, but you will affect all of those who are under your umbrella. You will protect them from the storm. This wraps up season one of The Journey, where we've been talking all about the driving conclusions that have led me to where I am today. I'm going to step away and take a break from the podcast for a bit, and I'm going to be thinking about things that I want to write and talk about for season two of the journey. In season two, I want to be sharing some of my special education expertise and dive deeper into some of the more common neurological issues that many of us are facing daily. I'm talking about challenges such as sensory processing disorder, ADHD, speech and language delays, epilepsy, and much more. To request a particular topic to talk about, to ask a specific question, or to read more or even catch up on all of the podcast episodes, visit my website at www.heymrshayes.com. That's www.heymrshayes.com. 